Hello, and welcome to this quick video. I wanna talk about some of the most important capabilities that we have here at Veeam. Instant VM recovery. This is something that's been out for well over a decade, innovated and iterated on every release. A lot of people use this every day, and I wanna to talk to you about instant VM recovery and how to use it and how to walk through it. So let's jump right into the lab, and I'm gonna show you this in action. So what we're looking at here is basically the crime scene. This is what happened. I have, let's see, six virtual machines that were both powered off and then subsequently deleted. That's a bad day. So these six virtual machines are not there and not working. The good news is I have a backup. So all six of these virtual machines are backed up in this job number 14 here. And I'm gonna right click on them and I'm gonna select and identify that they are ready to recover. So I have them on backup, already done, and instant recovery is just one of the many other options that are available. If I needed to, I could restore these directly to the cloud. That's a very, very realistic situation for some scenarios. But let's go ahead and do instant VM recovery. So these six virtual machines are already on disk as a backup, and I have a very important option first up. Do I want to restore right to the original location? This is really an important decision compared to the second option of going to different locations. Now, if I had like a device failure, hardware failure, if I need to go to a different cluster, I'll take that second option. Now, I like the third little box at the bottom of restoring virtual machine tags. Those are a really important organizational construct. That's how I build my backups. So when the backups run again, they will be backed up. I'm gonna go back to where they came from. Now, if I was in a cybersecurity type of situation, did I have a ransomware incident? I could perform a secure restore scan on these virtual machines while I do the recovery. I know that I did not. They were deleted. It was an administrator error. Let's just instant recover these as quickly as possible. So you can log maybe a help desk ticket if you want or any other additional information in this field. And this is gonna summarize the infrastructure information. What host, what virtual machines, and then two real important options on powering on after the recovery. So we're gonna do all six of these at once. What's really attractive about this, and you know, we talk about this on our YouTube channel about some of the other videos, Veeam is super hardware agnostic. We don't have a requirement for SSDs or anything like that. And in just a few moments, you'll see those virtual machines pop into the console as an instant recovery task. And just in a moment there, all six of them are booted up and running. Now, let's also go back into the infrastructure and take a look. Now, remember, all six of them were deleted. Let's search for them again, they're back, and let's just take a look and see how they're doing on screen. So let's start with number six and let's click on that one. And then number four, click on this one, you'll see Linux is booting up, that's a happy day, that's what I'm wanting to see on this, just booting back up. And then on the other one, number six, let's check on that screen as well. All of them are powering on. I'm seeing Windows, that's what I wanna see on this. They're, they're becoming ready to go. Now, once you have them here, you have some options, right? Okay, the applications are back and running, that's good. But it's super important to know that we have to close the loop. So if we right click on this, you'll see this migrate to production option. This is super important because instant recovery boots those six virtual machines up in this example off of the backup storage. It's not running on the production virtual infrastructure from a storage perspective. So let's fix that right here. This just closes the loop. Migrating to production will take the backups from a storage perspective, running from the backup storage, and then transparently move this back to the virtual infrastructure. We're gonna do all six of them at once here. And we're gonna be presented with an option of where do they go? I'm gonna put them in a cluster, in a place that I want them to go, in the production cluster, primary, and I'm gonna pick a host, and we'll be ready to go here. Now, I also recommend when you close the loop with this migration technique, you get everything right, including things like folders. I have everything in this environment in a specific folder, the RV folder. That way I know that my stuff or any production apps or whatever organizational constructs you use, you can put those right back in. So all that looks good. This is really cool. I could get granular with the different transfer proxies if I wanted to, but
But also, some environments may not have storage vMotion. I can use vQuick migration to do this task as well. But if I wanted to, I could even force quick migration if storage vMotion is in play. Now, in this next stage here, we're actually gonna take a look at all six of these virtual machines. We're gonna take a look at the target, the storage, the networking, the individual hosts, and we'll identify how the migration will happen. Now, what's really important about this is why, while this is happening, the virtual machines are running, the users are back online, but it's super important. A lot of organizations forget to do this migrate to production step because it does need to close the loop and get those virtual machines off of the backup storage back onto the primary storage. I've heard stories of people leaving these things running for months, not knowing that they need to move them off. So super important that you close the loop here. So once the checking possibility of migration is completed, you'll be presented with a short report that kind of gives you a forecast of how this task is going to go. And I think it's important to review that because you might say, oh, I expect storage vMotion to work in this environment, but maybe it isn't, or maybe I know that I don't have uh, the right storage or networking identified for an individual host, but once that's all set, you'll be presented with a really good forecast of how that's going to go. So let's take a look at that. Gives me a look at every single virtual machine, every single host target, and the transport mode. So I see a lot of storage vMotion, which makes sense in this environment. I would expect that to be how I migrate those back. Let's hit finish. And what's gonna happen here is eventually this list of six will be gone. Quick migration is the way that this is done from a job standpoint, even though storage vMotion is used. So each individual VM is just sitting here saying, waiting for the user to start migration. The job that we just launched, the quick migration job, which will actually in this example leverage storage vMotion, that will then complete that individual task. And so that's really important, again, to get it off of the backup storage and onto the production storage. Every single one of them will be processed. I believe it's one at a time, but you'll see it happen right here in this quick migration job. So already we've had two of them complete, and you'll see that they'll just progress through. Now this is a good time to know that when you look at a Veeam backup and replication job, the statistics or the progress indicator is really gives you a really good sense of the information of what's happening. I love to click on the individual object and get the individual information. And as you know your environment, you'll see, well, this one's bigger, this one's smaller. And I can also verify that back in the virtual infrastructure. You'll see some relocation tasks happening. This is all really good information. Again, closing the loop. Because when an instant VM recovery job is running, like I said, it's running from the backup storage. There's actually a special data store that's been published to the virtual environment that allows those six virtual machines to be accessed for instant VM recovery. Now that's not a data store that you're gonna go deploy new virtual machines on. It's really purpose-built to be a recovery data store. And you'll see it, it's named Veeam and it has the name of the server in it. But once you see that one is done, you'll see that the dismount is underway and you can already see that we're now at five in the top left. This will progress one at a time and there is some concurrency to it. If it's quick migration, it might behave a little bit different, but you'll see that we'll just finish up with the last one in here, 06, which is the biggest one, that Windows one that we just checked here, and you'll see that those dismounts carry on as the task finishes. The other thing, again, to keep in mind is that during these quick migration jobs, even though they are using storage vMotion, if they're using Veeam Quick Migration, they still will be kept online except for a momentary time where they're paused. And the very last part of closing the loop is watching the very last published instant VM recovery item finish its dismount and be removed from this part of the user interface. I like to kind of say that if I see something in instant VM recovery, that's good that I got it back up and running, but I also need to make sure that I close the loop and move it back to production. And any second now, it should just finish. And there it is, just like that. So as you can see, it's really easy to do an instant VM recovery. This is one of the things that Veeam is known for in the industry. 
We have a lot of different videos here on our YouTube channel about the different recovery options. You also can go to veeam.com and download a trial where you can play with this right away. I highly recommend you do that and just go to veeam.com and get started today.